Are you there? Okay, we're on conditionals. And uh, basically, there's three legs to programming that are so important. One is methods, two are conditionals, and three is looping. All right? So you've already got methods, we're starting conditionals, and next time we're going to hit looping. So that's all the basics, and you can do lots with that. And what is a conditional? Well, you've seen those once again before in PHP, where we just said, if something's true, run this statement. And that's all a conditional is. Now let's go down here. And let me bring this up so the viewer can catch that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to run a method. I'm going to create a method. So in my public static main void, that's the first thing that uh, Java is going to run when it sees that, right? I'm going to have three methods, test 6, test the value 5, and test the value 4. So those are arguments that I'm bringing in through this method that I'm creating called test. It's going to be an integer, and all I'm really going to test is, is it greater than 5? And if it's greater than 5, it's going to print x. Uh, plus, why am I using the plus sign here? Because that's concatenation, right? X plus is greater than 5. So it's going to tell me it's greater than 5. So that's what that's going to do. And the results of that should return what? Well, I'm actually going to only have one number that's greater than 5. And that's the first one. So I'm, all I'm going to print out here is 6 is greater than 5. That's it. Let's go to the next one. And so you've seen all these before. Once again, in PHP, where you get the, the greater than greater than sign works. The less than sign works. The greater than equal sign is a conditional, and the less than equal sign is conditional, right? But the one thing you need to work worry about, and uh, beginning programmers make this, I used to make this statement a lot, is you don't use in a conditional the equal sign, because the equal sign is an assignment operator. It sets a variable equal to something. You use a double equal sign. So if you want to check to see if a value is equal to something in a conditional, use double equal. Just to make that point, and we'll move on from there, and we'll see that in code. All right, let's see what we got here. Also, you've already seen the logical operators, like the double and symbol for and, and the two pipes for or. So if I wanted to do a conditional which involved actually two values, I could so is uh, x greater than 6 and less than 9. So I'm actually change, checking between the range of 6 and 9 using that logical operator. And you'll see that, oh, I use that all the time. So very important, these logical operators. And pretty much, I, I don't really go much beyond and and or, but sometimes you need to. It can get fairly complicated. But it, when it gets complicated, I'll have the tendency to try to simplify the code by writing a, just a little bit more code. Uh, now, the if statement is good, but if something's not true, you might just not want to stop there. You want, might want to use an else. Are you, are you remember this convention? Great, that's good. So if this is true, run this statement. And else, otherwise, if it's not, then run this statement. And I remember giving this lecture to you in PHP, so you're going to remember all this. So once again, we're going to run this again, and I'm, I'm, the code's coming. So I'm just going to go through the ex explanation here. Is now I've actually got something pretty cool here. I'm actually checking two things. If it's greater than 5, then print, you know, this is greater than 5. And if not, then, hey, it's not greater than 5. So in this particular case, what I'm going to get is, for the first one, oh, 6 is greater than 5. And the next one's well, well, 5 is not greater than 5, and 4 is not greater than, than, than 4. So that's how the if-else statement works. You got that down? Let's move on to the next one. Well, you know, there's actually three conditions. And uh, MIT loves this. They just cascade all these else-if statements together. They'll, they'll, they'll do a whole bunch of else-is forever. And I totally disagree with that approach. What you want to use is when you get more to more than three, use the switch statement. And I typically, when I get more than two, <laughs> I'll use the switch statement, okay? Uh, and if you're a gamer and if you're used to this type of uh, uh, work, you know that the switch is a more efficient uh, programming tool when you have to use multiple uh, cascading conditions. So I, I, I uh, basically will use if, if, else all the time. Every once in a while I use it else if, but most of the time it's if and else and switch for me. That's just my preference as a coder. It's more efficient that way. And so what he's going to do is the final one. There's actually three conditions. So there is a need for if, else, if, and else. And so he's got one condition. Hey, if it's greater than 5, else if it's equal to 5, or else if it's less than 5. So that's the three possible things that could happen. And so you do need the else if. And so just real quick here, he's, going, he's doing the first check. You can look at the conditional greater than. But look, at, is it equal? He's using the double equal sign there. You know that? And then if it's not greater than, if it's not equal, then it has to be what? And if it's not equal, it has to be less. And so that's your final condition right there. 
So when you run this program, you should you should actually get you do the first test. Sorry. You get the first test, and it should say, oh, well, you know what? Six is greater than five. You get the second test, it should say, well, five is equal to five. And the final test should be four is less than five, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to Eclipse and run the code. So I'm in Eclipse, and I have it here somewhere. Compare. There it is right there. And let's just run the, run, let's just run the code so you can see the answer. And as we said, let me bring it up the console. It says, hey, 6 is greater than 5, 5 is equals 5, and 4 is less than 5. Uh, any questions about the code before we move on? Okay, so you've done conditionals before. You're pretty happy with that. And now what, uh, what MIT does not handle is the switch case. We're going to go to the switch case right now. It turns out that my switch case is just a little different than the switch case I sent you. I did a little bit of work on it after I sent it to you. And so uh, you can work on yours as well. Um, and here's my switch case. And what I'm going to do here in this particular switch case is I have a number of nursery rhymes in here. All right. And I have Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail, did I spell that right, of water. I don't know if I did or not. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. You've heard that one before. We all have. And actually what I'm going to do in this particular example is just choose one of these using the switch case. So basically, you can see the way the switch case works is you got to have a switch and a variable. And each case is that variable. So if I put a 1 there, it will choose Jack and Jill. If I put a 2 in for first, it will choose went up the hill. If I put a, you, you got it? And then at the very end, what you always want to have is a default parameters. Now, it turns out the switch case is always the same. So whenever I write a switch case, I just copy this code from somewhere. Okay. And so each one of these has a break. And this is why switch is so much more efficient than the else if statement. Because when it's met its condition, it immediately breaks out of the switch statement. It doesn't keep scanning through here. See what I'm saying? And so that's why switch is so efficient. And uh, it knows where to go when you put the number in here. Hey, let's just go to 5. Yeah, well, it's 5. Let's move on. Now, if none of these numbers are in here, it's going to go to default and print out, hey, verse not found, try another number. Okay? Now, if I did a little if statement here to show you if here. If it's less than 6, which means one of these is, is done, then it's going to also print out the, the statement, ouch, Jack. Okay. So just real quick, let's look at the front part of the code. I'm going to import, uh, in this particular case, I have in the past just used a system. Let me copy this for a second. I have in the past come along here and just put system.out. Okay, you can do that. That's one way of doing it. Okay. But if I want to save myself one bit of code, I can import the java.language.system.out and just do out.print. And we talked about that last time, and so you're seeing it done here as well. And I'm, I'm bringing in the scanner, which we talked about last time, and that's going to be an end because I'm going to do what? Bring information in from the uh, console. I'm going to print out choose a verse, and then be, I'm going to be scanning for that verse right there. And when I type something in, it's going to put that first number in there and immediately run the switch case next. See, switch and puts the first number in there, chooses the case that I, I put in there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, and prints out the verse for me. Uh, hold on. Here it goes. Choose a number. And so I'm going to choose like 6, for example. Verse not found because 6 is not in there. Let's run again. Let's choose a number of 3 or 5. Hey, and Jill came tumbling after. Ouch, Jack. That's the last date she goes on with him, right? Okay, let's run another one. Uh, and let's put blue in there. The word blue. What's that going to give me? Is that going to give me an error? You're right. It wants an integer. <laughs> you, know more about, you know more about Java than I do. I need to quit. <laughs> Let's go back. Okay, so you are absolutely right, and I, I missed this part right here. This has been declared as an integer, right? So if you put anything in here that's not an integer, it's going to give you what? An error. You, you nailed it. Hey, I learned you. I taught you something. I learned you something. I taught you something. Hoo-hoo! All right, great. You caught that before I did. I'm, you know, I write so much code in so many different languages, so how is this language going to respond? Okay, there you go. Got it this time. All right, good. So, so we're going to run this again, and we'll put a 3 in there, and... And there you go. Uh, hey, to, to fetch a pail of water, ouch, Jack, not going on a date with you anymore. I'm going to run it again, and once again, put, your, put a string in there, right, like blue, and it's going to give me an error because what? It's strict typing to integer. It doesn't see an integer there. It's upset. Now, we didn't get this behavior in PHP, did we? Because PHP tries to figure out everything. It, but we get it in Java, and that's why you really be careful. You've got to do your error checking there and make sure you do a good job of strict typing. 
Okay, we're finished that up. Let's move on. Uh, MIT doesn't give a switch case, but you got it from me, so you get a little bit more than MIT here today, and that's fantastic because you get a full Java. Hey, that's it. We're done with the class today. But I've got I've got more to show you. I'm not done. Okay, I, I've actually got more to show you. I got more code to give you, so we're going to give you a little bit more code than uh, what MIT gave you today. <laughs>